Welcome back to Harbor for the sixth straight day. Israel pounded targets in the Gaza Strip. Palestinians say the death toll has reached 100, including 53 civilians. Well, Palestinians have responded with a barrage of more than 1,000 missiles into Israel, which have killed three civilians. Egypt is trying to negotiate a ceasefire between the two sides ahead of what some fear could be an Israeli ground invasion of Gaza. Where do things stand and why is this happening now? Does it have anything to do with a potential strike on Iran on its nuclear sites, as some have suggested? Richard Engel is NBC News chief foreign correspondent. He joins us now from Gaza. Richard, I want you to listen to this conversation which happened yesterday. It was Washington Post columnist David Ignatius, who's very good in the intel community, and also uh, talking to blogger Tom Ricks about whether or not a potential strike on Iran has anything to do with the fighting going on right now. Some people think that what this is about is in preparation for a likely war with Iran, mm -hmm. Israel testing the, 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 the rockets that would be fired against it from Gaza, next from Lebanon, so that we may see something with Lebanon soon, for, because it's a preliminary, this is the kind of warm-up round for the real conflagration that's ahead that involves Iran. You really think there's a chance that Israel would uh, strike Iran and try to take out those nuclear Yes, especially given the timing of the Gaza thing. They waited until after the American elections were over, and now they're getting down to business. Well, I guess that's the question that calls for some speculation, but is it possible that Netanyahu and his cabinet and the Knesset have decided that the best way to deal with Iran is to get involved in a heated, a hot war, and then see, Moran, obviously, Iran's role in arming the enemy, arming Hamas, and going for the, uh, the source of the problem? and bombing them uh, as part of a hot war situation. It does obviously require some speculation, but it also requires some analysis, and I think it makes a lot of sense. If you look at this, Israel really picked the timing. Israel could have uh, gone into a war with Hamas almost at any time and found its rocket launches as a, as a pretext. But it chose, to do, it chose to do it now. Israel has been testing its Iron Dome defense systems, which would certainly come into play if there was a war with Iran. It's been testing the new Middle East, testing Egypt's stance, forging new relations with Mohammed Morsi, seeing really how volatile the Arab world is post the Arab Spring. It's been testing Hezbollah. It's also been testing President Obama, who interestingly immediately threw his lot in with Israel. The president mm -hmm. didn't say we want to call for uh, cessation of hostilities, we want to call for calm. He immediately said we agree with Israel's right to defend itself. Israel's real enemy is Iran. If you remember Netanyahu was at the UN holding up his bomb chart, he wasn't talking about Hamas, he was talking about Iran. That is Israel's overriding threat. They have been able to deal with Hamas pretty handedly. I've seen just yesterday uh, Israeli warships uh, able to take out a single Hamas militant who was sitting in a chair by the waterfront. So one warship fired a rocket. You could barely see the ship at the, on the horizon and take out an individual militant. Uh, Israel has been telephoning the houses of neighbors of Hamas militants and telling them to get out of their houses. It has their phone numbers. So there is something suspicion, uh, suspicious about this. Israel has been able, uh, has too much intelligence on Hamas, has been able to deal with Hamas, Hamas too confidently. And you have to wonder, is, the, is there really a different objective? Could it be better for Israel, and I speak positively about why they would do this, to get rid of those missile sites in Hamas, in the, in the Gaza, before they attack Iran? Therefore, they can't be used for retaliation. That's certainly uh, that's an extra bonus. You get to defend your own cities. You, you figure out how well the Iron Dome system works, which has been an untested system, which has actually proven to be remarkably effective, the most effective of its kind in the world. You set back... Hamas's capabilities. You test your own intelligence, and you also test the the Arab world. I think that was the great unknown here. Yes. How would Egypt react? How would the Sinai react? And so far, there has been a degree of calm. And uh, and Morsi, although he has been sympathetic to Hamas, which is something the Israelis knew that he would be, has not proven to be an irrational actor. And it would be good for Israel to catch Iran in the act of arming its enemies. Therefore, they would be reacting to an aggressive exactly. action by the Iranians, not initiating an act of war. It makes sense to me. Good for Israel if it has to do this. Thank you, NBC's Richard Engel over in Gaza. And we'll be right back. You're watching Hardball, the place for politics.